Ciao e tutti. Mi chiamo Sonia. Mi chiamo Bill. Hello to you all. My name is Sonia. And my name is Bill. In this video, we're going to show you how to get from Venice to the lesser known city of Bergamo by train. Bergamo is about three and a half hours from Venice. Yeah, and for you to get there, you can take a train right from the Venezia St. Lucia station. My tip to you is to download the Trainline app and book your tickets in advance. You can reserve train seats right from your phone, and this can save you money, time, and most importantly, stress. Definitely stress. My tip is to make sure you book first class or business class seats when you ride the train because they're far more comfortable and there's more room for your luggage yeah. make for a much better trip. We're way too old mm -hmm. and it's less crowded. You hear that. Uh. When you get to Bergamo, you can visit this amazing tower. It's called the Campione Civic Tower. It's 173 feet high and it's over 600 years old. It's amazing. Wow. You can see the entire city from here. Yeah, you know, I guess Bergamo is everything you'd imagine a medieval town would be. For sure. Uh, it's encircled by Venetian walls. It's got Renaissance architecture, piazzas, ornate churches and palaces. And that white building there, it's right in the heart of, it's called Piazza Vecchia. Yeah, there's also a regional uh, dish that you can find in here at a cool place. It's a gelato dish called Scratchatella, I think. No, not Scratchatella, like Scratch. Scratch, Scratch, S-T. All right, my bad. Scratchatella. Scratchatella. There's the place, De Mille, and we got this wonderful Scratchatella, which yeah. is basically uh, vanilla ice cream with chocolate chips, and it is incredible, as are the streets here. You see that? car like moving through the traffic we saw that the entire time it kind of blew us away people in the states would be freaking out but here they're all cool with it it was also cool to see different shops have things like you know uh, like this shop has cheese wine and uh, some mushrooms others had meat some you know was just bakeries you know there was no like supermarkets which could be a good and a bad thing. Just depends. Good. There's is a traditional pasta filled with meat. That's it right there. It's called cascancelle. You have to try that. Mm, raviolis. So good. Not like Chef Boyardee, but no. Yes. <laughs> One of my favorite things was they cut the pizza here with scissors. That way they can control how big a slice they want. And they always ask you how big. You yeah. know. It's that really was modifiable. really cool. Yeah. Why why don't they do that here? Yeah. Very weird. <laughs> So they cut it there and then they weigh it. They bill yes. you based on that. There's a lot of street performers. So, it, I mean, please give these guys some money. Uh, they're really talented and they make your trip, uh, they enhance your trip for sure. It's a lot of fun. Oh, it's a vintage, well, I don't know if it's a vintage shop. This guy was right outside of our bedroom window, actually. We stayed uh, right there, actually. Yeah, second, second suggestion, or third, fourth, book an apartment that's right in the center of everything. That way you don't need a car. Yeah, you can you just, can just walk, walk around. We were here for one day, but I kept we trying to get into that pizza place right there. That's a handsome devil there. <laughs> but anyways, that pizza place was closed. <laughs> yeah, but we were only there for one day, so right. maybe they were open the next day. Here is Santa, 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 Santa Maria Maggiore. Built in the 12th century. It's a Duomo. It's beautiful. And Duomo basically means church. And this one was our favorite in all of Italy. It's not the oldest. It's not the biggest. Uh, but it's we felt it was the most grandiose. Like inside it was just absolutely beautiful. And um, it's got you know, jaw-dropping historical basilica. Uh, it's decorated with frescoes, statues, paintings, and huge tapestries. It just takes your breath away. Uh, it's blinged and gilled. It's a mixture of Romanesque, Gothic, Renaissance, and Baroque architecture. So if you're really into architecture, like, you will love it. Research, research, research. <laughs> Our goal was to go to as many Michelin star restaurants as we could. Here, I re we, we researched and found that this vernacular was about six minutes away, and it took you up to this Michelin star restaurant named Barretto di San Vigilio. Please forgive me if I'm not pronouncing this right. Yeah. Vigilio. A vernacular is like a, a cable car, basically. It went from the street all the way up this mountain. 
We'll be eating dinner a little bit later in Italy. Dinners typically start about 7.30. And they don't rush you. You're going to be there all night and they're cool with it. Uh, they had the best gazpacho I've ever had in my life. It's like a cold tomato soup with a whipped ricotta topping. But you got to try it. Best thing it Tastes better ever. than it looks. So that is a good mm-hmm. picture. Um, here there is another traditional Bermesco dish. It's braised beef on top of polenta. They had a bunch of other, you know, little dishes they bring out, desserts and cheeses and stuff. And it's just an incredible experience. That was a, like a ginger, they call it a digestivi. Yeah, it's delicious. You digest your food afterwards. Mm-hmm. I, I would say, too, don't be afraid to go to nice restaurants. You know, go to Michelin star restaurants. So that's where you're going to really experience Italian cuisine. So what do you guys think? Was that helpful? Leave a comment and let us know. And in the next episode, you can see highlights from the place George Clooney calls home, Lake Como. Oh, beautiful.